The 83rd Annual WIAA Boys State Basketball Championships are brought to you exclusively statewide by Cenex, Land O'Lakes, and your local cooperatives. Partners you can trust. The Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin and Milk, the official beverage of the WIAA Games. Got milk? Marshfield Clinic, a national leader in medical care, research, and education. Rural insurance companies providing a full line of insurance products for Wisconsin's families and businesses. The Wisconsin Technical College System, 16 colleges that make life better for the people and businesses of Wisconsin. For high skills training, go here, get there. And by Menards, helping families build America's heartland for 38 years. Save big money at Menards. We started the day with four bull, uh, gold balls to hand out. One of them has been handed to Randolph. They are the Division IV state champs. Division II championship game is coming up next. But let's talk about what's coming up tonight on prime time. The Division III state championship will start at 6.30. It'll be Cuba City and Phillips. These two teams last played on Thursday morning. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do for us tonight in the 6.30 Division III state championship game. Then about 8.15, we will have the Division I state championship, and I know a lot of people around the state are looking forward to this one. Milwaukee Vincent has won two straight state championships. They will be going for their third straight championship, trying to become only the third team in state history to win three straight. But Middleton might have something to say about that tonight. Should be a great game later tonight. Coming up next, it'll be New London and Whitefish Bay, two very good teams. They looked very good yesterday. And they're gonna battle for, their, for the next gold ball, and that'll be handed out, and uh, we'll get the tip off started in about five minutes. But for a preview on that game, let's go courtside to Bob Bradovich and Jim Jones. All right, thank you very much, Ted. Whitefish Bay, Jim, had a physical battle against Spooner yesterday, 60 to 50, the Blue Dukes prevailing. New London, on the other hand, had to go to overtime to knock off a very good Monona Grove team, 42-40. Any advantage emotionally for either of these teams today? No, I think just to play in the championship game is going to be an honor, and I think they'll probably fill each other out, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, from that point on, just like Spooner and, and Monona Grove and Whitefish Bay uh, did last night. Whitefish Bay, of course, the Boyd brothers, we talk about the twins a lot, but they got a great performance from the inside player, Jerry Reeves. I call them the big three, uh, Boyd, Boyd, and Reeves. Jerry Reeves had 21 points and 10 rebounds and uh, really began to come on his own. On the other side for New London, Matt Hintz had a great game. 24 points against Monona Grove and a big three-pointer to send it to overtime. Yeah, he struggled a little bit yesterday. The 24 points, five rebounds. He was only 6 of 19 uh, from, the, from the field, but he hit that crucial uh, three-point basket to send him in overtime. All right, New London and Whitefish Bay for the Division II State Championship. We're going to take a break right now to hear from your local sponsors. This is your WIA Network Station. We are back at the Cole Center. New London and Whitefish Bay getting set to decide the Division II state championship. Let's take a look at how these two teams got here. Whitefish Bay knocking off Spooner by a score of 60 to 50. And it was New London defeating Monona Grove in overtime 46-44. Whitefish Bay, of course, located just north of the city of Milwaukee, New London in the Green Bay area. Jim, when you look at New London, this is a team that's uh, dominated by juniors, and Coach Roy Hintz talked a lot about these guys seizing the moment. You know, you never know what's going to happen next year. You've got an opportunity to make the most of it. Yeah, I don't know if you should do that, because even if you have all your talent coming back next year, you never know what's going to happen. Other teams season, they get better. So you want to jump on the moment right now and take care of business. New London lost a couple of overtime games during the season, but I think during tournaments, they started winning the close games in the sectional, they beat Kimberly by two. They beat Southern Door by two in overtime. And then, of course, yesterday they win over Monona Grove by two in overtime. And I think that's probably why they uh, uh, maintained their poise down the stretch. And the young man had hit those two clutch free throws. And I think reading in the paper today, he said he's been in that situation before. Whitefish Bay had the big target on their backs all year long. Everybody expected this team to be here. And they've handled that pressure very well. I think that what happened to them last year against Salt Perry on that phantom call, uh, it could have gone either way, that uh, you got a senior dominant team led by, I call the big three, and then you got kids coming off the bench like Frank and, 
and Guy, they did an outstanding job uh, just to get here, playing in a Division I conference that they tied uh, for first with Homestead. And I think you, you touched on an important point, Jim, because Whitefish Bay, the Boyd brothers get the bulk of the headlines and the attention, but this is a solid team and everybody contributes. You look at Brendan G, the 6'4 senior center, contributed two points yesterday, but the big man had four assists. Yeah, on, on down the line, Frank came in, he had 10 points, and everybody seems to be playing their role, and, and they rise at the right time. Both teams coming in, feeling confident. They get to this point. Now they get to battle for the gold ball right here in front of a statewide audience at the Cole Center in Madison. We are set to meet our starting lineup, so let's send it across court to PA announcer Mike Mankey. And now, here are the starting lineups for today's Division II championship game between the New London Bulldogs and the Whitefish Bay Blue Dukes. For New London at forward, a six foot four inch junior, number 42, Matt Hintz. And at forward for Whitefish Bay, a six foot two inch senior, number 42, Mario Boyd. At the other forward for New London, a six foot four inch junior, number 52, Kip Lobenstein. And at forward for Whitefish Bay, a six foot three inch senior, number 50, Cherry Reeves. Starting at center for New London, a six foot six inch junior, number 50, Casey Kaepernick. And at center for Whitefish Bay, a six foot four inch senior, number 44, Brendan G. Starting at guard for New London, a five foot 11 inch senior, number 20, Luke Engel. And at guard for Whitefish Bay, a six foot four inch senior, number 34, Marius Boyd. At the other guard for New London, a five foot 11 inch junior, number 30, Jamie Dawn. And at guard for Whitefish Bay, a six foot junior, number 22, Jeff Frank. The head coach for New London is Roy Hintz, and the head coaches for Whitefish Bay are Jeff Thilke and Jack Blyer. The referees for today's game are Brian Steffen and Sam Van Riper, both from Onalaska. New London 22 and four, Whitefish Bay 25 and one. Jim, we saw New London yesterday get off to a good start shooting three. Yeah, they, they may have a little difficult time against this uh, Blue Duke uh, defense. This is one of the fortes of Whitefish Bay and that's what's gotten them here the last two out of three years that they've been in the state tournament playing the championship game. And we saw the Blue Dukes yesterday against Spooner when Ken Watkins of Spooner hit three three-pointers to put his team on top in the first half. Whitefish Bay adjusted at halftime and extended that defense a little bit. Yeah, they came out uh, the beginning of the third quarter and had an 18-1 uh, to run for the first six minutes and 57 seconds of the third quarter, and then the game was kind of academic then. We just saw the co-coaches for Whitefish Bay. On the left was Jack Blyer. On the right, Jeff Filkey. Co-coaches splitting the duties for the Blue Dukes. Whitefish Bay in the white uniforms with the blue trim. New London in the red. White numerals and white trim. Jerry Reeves jumping center for Whitefish Bay. And for the Bulldogs of New London, it's 42. Matt Hintz, we are underway. Division Three State Championship, Whitefish Bay controls. Marius Boyd. Jeff Frank, he'll launch one from the outside and hit it. You see New London started out in a 2-1-2 zone and the young man, Jeff Frank, who had 10 points yesterday, is their primary outside shooter, knocked one down. Now New London will try to answer. Kaepernick, driving baseline. Hits it to Lobenstein. You see Whitefish Bay is in their uh, tenacious man-to-man -man defense. Hints hanging, no good. Battle for the rebound, right there is Dawn, no good. Batted out of bounds by number 50, Kaepernick. So we talk about New London launching the threes right away. It's Jeff Frank, and, and you touched on it. Ten points yesterday in a solid four game. Whitefish Bay on top, 3-0, just underway. Division II state championship. G to Frank, another three. That one's no good. Rebound, Mario Boyd up, no good. Tapped around, whistle. And a foul. 
Now that's what the Whitefish Bay did yesterday. They were strong on the boards, but I don't see a, a size advantage to Whitefish Bay like yesterday. Uh, matter of fact, I think uh, New London is probably uh, a little bigger than Whitefish Bay. Good matchup size-wise. The foul on Mario Boyd is first. Now the Bulldogs will try to get on the board. Kaepernick, Robinstein drives, travels. Just a little hesitant right there when he caught the ball in the free throw line and uh, kind of shifted his feet for travel. We saw it in the first game this morning. And of course in the Racine case, uh, Vincent game last night, Jim, you don't want to fall behind Bacon. It's awfully tough to come back. And a turnover for the Blue Dukes. The 1998 WIA State Boys Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Menards, helping families build America's heartland for 38 years. Save big money at Menards. Two travel calls there, uh, one on uh, Mar Marius Boyd, uh, shifted his feet there on forced turnover. Kaepernick with it, throws it away. Another on forced turnover. Turnover number two on New London. Teams kind of feeling each other out early on. Marius Boyd swings it to Frank. To Boyd up top, now G. They like to bring G up top, and I think his height advantage allows him to see some players down low and deliver the pass. Just on a foul underneath to go against New London. Trying to keep Jerry Reese from getting the ball inside, so they're front, they're big men down, down low like you should be anyway. Foul on Casey Kaepernick, his first. Whitefish Bay will inbound with Reeves. Saw the Blue Dukes yesterday running an inbounds play that wound up in a big dunk. That was a great dunk. You still see New London in their, uh, looks like a, well, they're matching up. Look, could be a 2-3, could be a 3-2. They have a man on a free throw line, so right now it looks like a 3-2. Spooner had some success with that 3-2 uh, defense yesterday. Obviously, coaches uh, doing some scouting. Frank for three, long, no good. He's one of three from the three-point line. Now New London tries to fire a long pass, intercepted Frank. Well, standard in the zone, New London, what it does is it's, it's keeping the ball out of uh, out of the three B's hand, uh, Boyd, the Boyd twins, and uh, Jerry Reed. Frank's had all the shots right now with the exception of that foul underneath the basket. And still by Don, Boyd spins in the lane, no good. For Marius Boyd, New London will come out with it. Don will set it up. Hints. Swing it to Angle. He'll try a long one. That's no good. Rebound inside. Knocked away from Robinstein and a foul. Well, New London's battling on the boards. And like I said before, size isn't going to be the question right there. You might say experience because uh, I think uh, Whitefish Bay has the seniors on the floor. And New London, I think, have four juniors and one senior that's starting in our lineup. Marius Boyd with the foul. And that'll send 52. Kip Robinstein to the free throw line. And this is the first one. Last time Robinstein was at the line, uh, Jim, a uh, pretty important part of yesterday's game, and he delivered. He knocked down two key free throws to put him in his championship game. There's only two points of the game, but they couldn't have come at a bigger time in the overtime. One or two. New London's on the board. 3-1 your score early on, first quarter from the Kohl Center. What New London is doing is shading a little to uh, Maurice Boyd uh, and letting the other uh, ball player handle uh, the basketball. Chris Bay operating on the perimeter, G to Frank. He's had the shots early on. He's hit one of three. He's got a three-pointer for Whitefish Bay's points. I think some other uh, Whitefish Bay uh, ball players are going to have to probably step up because they're going to shade to those uh, to the three ball players that are their leading scorers. Reeves wanted to go baseline, but he travels. Two turnovers now on Whitefish Bay. I'd say right now that this pace is probably favoring New London uh, defensively because uh, Whitefish Bay does like to get up and down the court. Don will try a three. That one's off the iron. Rebound to G. So that was a good rebound. Don was, was three of six in three-point range yesterday. Reeves will fire from the baseline. That's off. 
Rebound, Mario Boyd. Gets his brother, Marius. And Whitefish Bay's not getting uh, too many looks inside. They've been launching the three-point shots or the shots from the outside. Very, uh, uh, New London's making it very difficult to get the ball inside. Boyd will try it. No good. Rebound, Robinstein. Right, New London's still off the boards, and they're not giving them any second chances like Spooner did yesterday. It's baseline. Tough shot, count it. Take a look at that one again, uh, Matt Hintz. That's a great drive a along the baseline. Land, and he's going to get a chance for a three-point play. They're taking it right to Whitefish Bay. Matt Hintz, just a junior, coach's son. Nice double pump to get around Reeves. He scored over 1,000 points this year, too, as a junior. 4-3, New London on top. Their first lead of the ball game. And now Whitefish Bay will take a timeout. Coaches Filkey and Blyer want to talk things over. 20-second timeout. Jim, your early impressions of this ball game? Oh, I think it's in it's it's favor in New London because they're playing the pace. They're sealing off the inside threat or the big three that I call the, the Boyd twins and uh, Reeves. So the other two uh, ball players are going to have to step up. So I'd say it's favor New London right now. And uh, Whitefish Bay is settling for outside shots. Cold shooting early on. New London just one of five. Whitefish Bay one of seven. Well, it's obviously at this time out, Whitefish Bay is going to make some adjustments, and we'll see what they are. That high-low game worked so well for Whitefish Bay yesterday. New London clogging the middle. Well, they got more movement after that timeout. Boyd from the baseline. Two-pointer for Marius Boyd. He moved the ball exceptionally well that time and got a free open baseline shot. Four now, Whitefish Bay. And a foul. Well, Mario, Mario Boyd, Boyd picks up the foul. You get a look at Roy Hintz on the New London bench. Now watch for a step in along the baseline. Seal. Didn't look for him. Don behind the arc, swings to angle. Back to Don. Got Lobenstein on the baseline. Gets it inside. Turnaround shot long by Kaepernick. Boyd comes down with it. Whitefish Bay is trying to pick up the pace and try to get some transition baskets. Marius Boyd does that. Gives his team an 8-4 lead. Both teams seem to be picking up the pace right now. Inside now. Kaepernick will pull it out. Looking inside, gets it to Don. Fish Bay doing a good job fronting the post down low. Shot there, good by Casey Kaepernick. It's a tough shot, but uh, New London is also trying to dish the ball inside, probably try to get uh, their big people in foul trouble. 8-6, your score. Whitefish Bay with the ball and a two-point lead. Well, they brought Reed up, uh, Reed's up top. A little more movement. Marius Boyd, that's a three, short. Angle with the long rebound. Had hints, but that bounce pass a little too low. Not for a big man. You want to you kind of keep the ball in the air. We've got a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout to hear from our network sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. Bob Bradovich and Jim Jones back at the Cole Center. Whitefish Bay leading New London 8-6. Scott Emmerich is roaming the Cole Center. Scott, take it away. Bob, I'm with Judy Hintz, the uh, wife of head coach Roy Hintz, and of course the mother of star player Matt Hintz. And Judy, what are you going through right now? Well, I don't, I'm just nervous, just totally nervous. It still is very unreal to me that we're even here. What's it like at home now? Is it uh, easy for, the, for your son and, and for your husband to separate uh, basketball and leave it at, back at the gym? Yes, it's always been like that. It doesn't come home ever. So in a situation like this, are you more of a mother or more of a, a wife? Probably more mother. <laughs> Bob, there you go. Judy Hens, back to you. Three-pointer for Marius Boyd. Whitefish Bay on top, 11-6. After both of those timeouts with Whitefish Bay, they've come out and they've had great ball movement until they've uh, freed one of their shooters and they just got uh, a basket by uh, Marius Boyd. 
Pass whistled inside. Lobenstein didn't get a handle on it. Now Whitefish Bay will try to expand on this 11-6 lead first quarter. Division II state championship. Five turnovers for New London. G inside, hits it. That was another good offensive set when he went down and he got G uh, flashing to the elbow along the free throw line for two points. You know, for a guy that only averages three points per game, had two yesterday, when G gets the ball in a position to shoot, he just goes up with a lot of confidence. Now you got Whitefish Bay, uh, it looks like a 1-3-1 one, one zone after Hits. that timeout. 4-3, he's got six. And Whitefish Bay's gonna have to recognize him because uh, he's their go-to person. Now the Blue Dukes will play for one as the clock ticks down on this first quarter here. And New London, of course, is going to stay in that zone because they don't want any one-on-one -on -one matchups with Boyd, uh, the Boyd twins and uh, Reed. Marius Boyd will start the play. Gets it to Reed. Reed's drive. Pulls up and scores. And that's what they don't want. That, they don't want any one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what they had. They had a mismatch there where Reed got inside for a two-point shot. One quarter in the books. Whitefish Bay leads New London 15-9. We'll hear now from our local sponsors. This is your WIA Network Station. Back at the Cole Center, Whitefish Bay leading New London by a score of 15-9. It's a six-point lead because of this basket by Jerry Reeves. And this is exactly what New London doesn't want to do, create a one-on-one -on -one situation with the two boy twins and uh, Jerry Reeves. And it happened just before uh, the end of the first quarter. Your Culver's game summary. Difference really at this point, turnovers. Exactly. Five for New London, just two for Whitefish Bay. Sub into the ball game for New London. That's 32 for Petit and another turnover. Reeves on the perimeter to G. Marius Boyd. Spinning baseline. G scores. Now you mentioned him uh, at the end of that first quarter, and he quietly has gotten two quick buckets for him to help him out. They're in a 1-3-1 one, one zone now, Whitefish Bay. The lead is now eight. Angle for three, short. Yvonne e Mario Boyd. Whitefish Bay. Thinks about pushing it up, but Frank will slow things down. And I think uh, playing at 1-3-1, one, one, uh, New London doesn't want to hurry their shots. They want to move the ball around and make Whitefish Bay work on defense. Mario Boyd, no good. Gets it back, scores. His first two, it's a 10-point lead. Now, Mario got that basket because I think it was Frank or G that kept that ball alive. And strong move, and a nice job using the glass. It was a nice acrobatic move off the glass. Hintz has eight. That's Whitefish Bay's lead down to eight. Oscar pass. Mario Boy pulls up, doesn't get it, rebound Hintz. Baseline to T. Swing it to Don. Hintz finds Don. Get it on the baseline. Kaepernick hits. Casey Kaepernick with four. That was good ball movement, and they got a free uh, baseline shot. Extra pass made the difference that time, Jeff. Yes. And that's what they have to do. Unlike the last time they were down court where they shot the ball right away, you want to move up. Uh, that white fish bait, uh, one through one defense around so you can get an open look. White fish bait showing a lot of patience. Reeves with it up top. Now we'll get the game going. Well, what white fish bait is trying to do is they want to extend that New London defense so they have some openings in the gap where they're flashing, just like he flashed in the middle and he missed them. Frank for three, no good. He's one of four from behind the arc. And now Don with it. The T, angle. Don for three, no good. Tracked down by Frank. 
That's a little deep three, I think. I don't, I don't know if they want those type of shots. Mike for Spade, 19. New London, 13. Went for the Division II State Championship. Mike for Spade's been very, very patient. G long on that one. Rebound Kaepernick. A little bit out of his range, I think. The T with it. Foul on G. Let's take a look at this one again. New London running off the G miss. Nice pass by Don to the T. Pushing the ball on that, uh, that jump shot created that on a long rebound. And New London pushed it. And they're going to have an opportunity to uh, get two points off the free throw line. 44, Nick Grower in for New London. And 52, Justin Engelmeyer in for G. New London trying to work some new players in there because obviously the five starters played a lot in that overtime game yesterday. Yeah, the pace of this game, though, uh, you know, you haven't done, I was going to mention not too many substitutes on either card except New London just uh, entered uh, a couple ball players in. Petit looking for his first two points of the afternoon. Clint Petit of 5'11. Senior forward. Over two at the line. Rebound tapped around. Now Marius Boyd will bring it up. Been a defensive battle so far. Yes, it has. Both teams are still filling each other out. Both are playing solid defense. You'd expect that of two teams playing the state championship. Don't get any place without playing some defense. Whitefish right Bay, a lot of patience. We saw this yesterday against Spoon. A couple times they pushed it up court when they had the break, but otherwise they'll set that offense. Yeah, and the London has to be careful with what they're doing. Uh, Whitefish Bay is being patient. They threw the ball away. Engelmeyer with the turnover. Here comes Hintz, loses the handle, and out of bounds. Ball goes to Whitefish Bay. That's a good steal, though. And for New London, number 52, Kip Lobenstein. Now Kip Lobenstein checks back in for New London. Video memories of this WIA state tournament. You got to set that VCR, call one of the numbers on your screen. We'll send you a tape. Bay is trying to, Whitefish Bay is trying to pull New London out. They want to extend them so they can do some one-on-one -on -one and get to the basket. Maybe drive, penetrate, and kick it back out for a three-point basket, maybe. Frank has had some open looks from behind the arc. Knocked down his first shot. Those shots seem to be there for him. Well, you got to give New, uh, New London credit. Uh, they're playing some tough defense. They're in and out. They'll go out, but then they'll sag back in, not give them that angle to penetrate. Uh, to get an easy bucket. Like this day, trying to set it up now. Mario Boyd. Doing better, Marius. Coming up play two. Bob to Reeves. Turnaround shot. No good. Rebound hits. Don ahead to Petit. Clint Petit in the lane. Foul on Reeves. And New London pushed it on that after the rebound, and they're going to come, with, come away with two more free throws. I don't know how many uh, inside uh, baskets uh, Whitefish Bay has had. Like what Clint Petit does here, he, he really didn't have a great shot, but he realized if he went up, he could draw some contact. Now he'll go back to the free throw line. Kind of double pumped and uh, got a foul out of it. Matthew Cook, number 10, in for Whitefish Bay. He had some playing time yesterday. Clint Petit on the board. And checking in, Casey Kaepernick, number 50. The 1998 WIA State Boys Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Senex Land of Lakes and your local cooperatives partners you can trust. First point for Clint Petit. Whew. One of four from the free throw line in this ball game. 19-14. Now, Marius Boyd pushing it up. Into the lane, dumps it down low. Mario Boyd, and that's out of bounds. A little too hard, a little too hard. They, they was trying to get an easy transition basket on that and ended up as a turnover. Like your state coaches, Jeff Filke, Jack Blyer. Looking on. 
Base still in the 1-3-1 zone. Four turnovers now for Whitefish Bay. New London has six. Don up top. New London's being very patient, moving the ball up. Knocked away, a good defensive play by Mario Boyd. Now Marius Boyd will put it up. Plays catch with Cook. Cook drives. Bounce pass. Turnover right to Spain. Well, you got to give New London credit. Their defense, they're, they're bringing them out. They turn the ball over. Playing good defense. Brendan G. Checks in for Whitefish Bay. Matt Hintz comes in for Petit. Hintz getting a bit of a break. Now let's see what New London does. Down five. Base still in 1 3 1 zone. 44 is Nick Grower. He's got the ball now. Shoots the three. Long, no good. Rebound, Mario Boyd. Back to Boyd. Marius Boyd operating against Hintz. This is zone. Uh, what Whitefish may want to do is probably move the ball. They're doing an awful lot of dribbling. They move the ball like they got some key baskets after a couple uh, timeouts. Uh, they would move the New London defense and probably get some easy looks. One minute to go. First half. Whitefish Bay on top, 19-14. G gets it to Cook. Now Mario Boyd back to Cook. Trying to find something inside, but nothing's there. Yeah, I, I think they've been well scouted, and I don't think they're going to give up anything inside because everything is dribble penetration, and they're cutting that off. And then they're fronting their deep men down along the blocks or the flashers to the free throw line. Now the Blue Dukes will play for one. London trying to extend that defense. And Whitefish Bay just can't stand there. Don comes out on Boyd. Now Reeves. Jerry Reeves loses it. I think what New London is doing, see, with everything Whitefish Bay did yesterday, everything was like a one on one. And uh, playing this zone kind of gives you weak side help if there's some isolation situations. Now the Bulldogs will set it. For a final shot. Hints. Kaepernick. Hints. Contact. Foul on Reeves. So put him in the bonus. Jerry Reeves has two fouls. Seventh team foul. So that'll send. Should send Hints to the line. 54, Ryan Clifton in for Whitefish Bay. Reeves comes out. Don't want him picking up a third foul. Not like for a rebound or anything like that. So now Matt Hintz at the free throw line. 4.3 seconds to go. Got the first one. Hintz with nine so far. He can make it 10 with this one and cut the lead to three. He does, 1916. Marius Boyd. Will fire it up, gets it off. No good. We have played one half of basketball. Whitefish Bay leads New London 1916. We're going to hear now from our network sponsors. This is your WIA network station. Bob Radovich and Jim Jones back at the Kohl Center right at the half. Whitefish Bay leading New London 1916. Jim. New London won an exciting ball game in overtime, but evidently their coaches watched Whitefish Bay in the second game because New London is doing some things on defense that is giving Whitefish Bay problems. I really think that's probably why New London's in that 2-3 uh, zone or 2-1-2 or two two zone, depending on the off offensive set that Whitefish Bay is in. And if you notice yesterday, and probably all season long, uh, the Boy Twins and Reed are one-on-one -on -one ball players that create a lot of problems, and they, they run that high-low. With this zone that they're playing, they're not able to get those inside looks. And uh, they've been, I think Whitefish Bay has been very frustrated with that. Low scoring first half, 1916. We will have highlights and first half stats in a little bit. But right now, let's send it up top to our friend Ted Stefania. 
Thank you very much, Bob. You guys have a great game going on in the Division II state championship game. Earlier today, we crowned our Division IV state champion as Randolph defeated Three Lakes 50 to 46. But let's take a look at what's coming up later tonight. Primetime basketball action, WIAA boys championships. It'll be Cuba City and Phillips starting things off at 6.30 tonight. That'll be followed by our Division I championship, and everyone in the state is looking forward to this one. Milwaukee Vincent and Middleton. Milwaukee Vincent looking for their third straight title. They are trying to join Beloit Memorial, the teams of the 30s, and the Marathon Boys of the 70s as the only other two teams that have ever won three straight basketball championships. Well, if you've ever been to a basketball game, you may have noticed the coaches squirming around on the benches. That's because coaches must maintain contact with the bench. Bob Bradovich of our Eau Claire affiliate takes a closer look at the great experiment, the coaches box. Imagine a teacher not being able to move around a classroom. That's been an analogy made by a number of basketball coaches who want to be able to stand while a game is in progress. Coaches must remain seated um, while the ball uh, is alive and um, play is going on. Uh, specific times that they uh, are allowed to stand up and it really is specific. Um, when they would like to request a timeout, they are, are, are allowed to stand um, during the timeout um, and certainly talk with their players. Um, they are allowed to uh, leave the bench um, and stand as far as um, looking at in between quarters and also uh, at half. And uh, really, as far as generalities, that is about all. Otherwise, they are um, to remain in contact uh, with the bench at all other times. Wisconsin is one of 12 states nationally that requires coaches to sit during a game. But starting next year, the WIAA will experiment with a coach's box. And that will allow coaches to stand during a game and move around, but only within a six-foot area near the bench. Well, I tell you, I, I think it should be great. It's, gonna, it's probably going to save my knees. I have a really nervous habit of kneeling in front of the bench, and I just haven't been able to get away from that. So. Uh, from that standpoint, I'm looking forward to being able to stand up. Uh, the other end of it, I think it, it only gives you, if it's used correctly, it gives you more of an opportunity to communicate with your kids. I think it just helps communication. I think a good coach got to communicate with his players and stuff, and I think being able to get closer and being able to move around and, and talk to some people on the bench and stuff, I think will help the communication part of it, and I think that's a big step in coaching. The WIAA Board of Control approved the new coach's box rule by a 9-1 to vote, but as with any rule change, there are concerns. Some coaches will try to intimidate the referees, try to uh, uh, use the coach's box as an advantage over the officials. I think for experienced officials, uh, I don't think you'll notice a, a great deal of change, but for maybe younger, more inexperienced officials, it'll be a little bit tougher. I don't see any major problems with it. I think it'll be an interesting two years to, for the experiment to see if it works or not. We've got a good one going in our Division II state championship game. It is Whitefish Bay 19 at New London 16. For second half action, let's go back down to courtside with Jim and Bob. All right, thanks, Ted. Jim, when we look at the first half highlights, we're going to see a very balanced game. And uh, Whitefish Bay getting off to a good start early on, but then New London got back into it. Here's Whitefish Bay doing a nice job swinging it around to Marius Boy. And when they swung the ball around, they got some easy looks and... Uh... They moved that New London uh, zone around, and they like that jump shot that Morius Board uh, just knocked down. Took New London a while to get on the scoreboard, and they eventually got it going in leading scorer Matt Hintz getting a three from outside. I think kind of sparked them and got them going. Kind of sparked them, but I don't think it's anything that Whitefish Bay uh, is uh, surprised about. There, He's their leading scorer. Whitefish Bay, Mario Boyd missing, but getting his own rebound. He stayed after, and I think that was uh, G that kept it alive, so he had an easy land off that rebound. Saw Matt Hintz hitting the three, and now Matt Hintz will take it inside on a nice drive right here. This is a good acrobatic athletic move off the glass where he leaned over and uh, concentrated on the spot and knocked it in. And then later on, New London doing a nice job moving the ball around, making the extra pass. He'll work it to Hintz, and then he'll swing it back to Jamie Dunn, and then Dunn will find Luberstein. Casey Kaepernick. Was that Kaepernick? Kaepernick. Okay. For a nice uh, baseline jump shot. 
And when both teams have moved the basketball around, they've had some easy looks. It's when they've rushed into their offense, and it's probably because of the tenacious defense on both teams where they're not getting any easy looks. Your Culver's game summary, uh, field goal shooting pretty close for both teams. New London is getting to the free throw line. Well, New London is taking the ball right to them, and uh, Whitefish Bay is settling for the jump shots with the exception of when they've moved the ball around. They got some easy looks or some easy baskets. Leading scorers, Matt Hance has 10 for New London, and it's Marius Boyd with eight, Jeff Frank with six, and we may have put the hex on Jerry Reeves. We talked about him in our pregame, uh, Jim. He only has three shots, one of three for just two points. Yeah, and he had an outstanding game yesterday where he had the 21 points and uh, shot a great percentage from the field and uh, had 10 rebounds. So, But now you have to give New London credit because they're packing it in and they're not getting those second efforts like they did against Spooner. And maybe because uh, New London uh, has probably a little bit of size, size advantage or they're about equal size advantage-wise. Exactly right. Well, both coaches with some adjustments to make at halftime. We'll take a short break to hear from our network sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. Back at the Kohl Center, Whitefish Bay leading New London 1916. Scott Emmerich has some information for us. Scott, take it away. With their team. All right, some problems with Scott's microphone. We'll try to go back to him later on to talk about what the coaches for both teams said to their clubs at halftime. And I think if you're New London, you have to be happy with the score and the fact that you're only down three. If you're Whitefish Bay, I think you're looking at some ways maybe to speed the tempo up a little bit. Yeah, I expect them to come out and maybe trap, maybe, uh, maybe use some zone pressure. And if you take a look at the scores uh, throughout the year, New London, I think the most points they scored has been about 70, 71. Whitefish Bay has been in the 80s a number of times. So this is favoring uh, New London, exactly. And we'll see what Whitefish Bay does. Now again, Spooner yesterday, Spooner made a nice run, took a halftime lead. Third quarter, Whitefish Bay comes out with some traps, some pressure, and that got the ball game back in their favor. Yeah, Whitefish Bay uh, up their defense. Uh, they trapped and went on an 18-1 run the first six minutes of the third quarter. Just talking uh, off camera with statistician Don Kerr, and we all <laughs> agree, hey, you don't have to have a lot of points to have an exciting basketball game. Don called it a chess match. And we'll see what moves are made here second half. We start with the turnover. Now, I wish he had a hustle after that ball right away if it went over the 10-second line and they would have taken the ball out of bounds right here instead of along uh, the sideline, a little closer to the basket. You see co-coach Jack Blyer, he grimaced on that one. Didn't see it out there, but boy, he was not happy with that. Now Hintz in the corner for three, no good. Frank pulls down the rebound. He's had a good look. Now, Marius Boyd to the glass, scores. And that's what he said they wanted to do. That's why you heard Marius Boyd say, come on, come on, let's go. And he did pass him the ball down the sideline. He got an easy layup off the board. Marius Boyd has 10. 21-16 now, Whitefish Bay. Down low in traffic, gets a block. Kaepernick up again, no good. Knocked around. We'll stay with New London. Kaepernick, good effort, but just couldn't get it to go. Good effort and probably rushing his shot, but you know, when you got uh, those jumping jacks around there trying to block your shot, you have a tendency to kind of rush your shot. Now let's send it over to Scott Emmerich. Scott. Yeah, Bob, what I tried to say before is both these teams talked offense during halftime. Jack Blyer, co-head coach for Whitefish Bay, said he wants to see his team move more on offense. For some reason, they stopped moving, and that's how they bogged down offensively. Roy Hintz wants to see his team just simply make some shots. They were a little cold in the first half, and he thought if they made a few shots that they'd be up five or six points. Bob, back to you. Thanks, Scott. Hintz can't connect on that trip. Now Marius Boyd between the legs, drives, baseline, dishes, and contact and a foul as Mario Boyd took it up strong. And that's what Whitefish Bay is doing. Uh, beginning of the third quarter, they're pushing the ball, they're pushing down the sideline. Did a little dancing, went to the basket, passed it off, and uh, they're gonna go to the free throw line. Marius told uh, brother Mario, take it up right away because that little pump fake, he was in traffic. But he will go to the free throw line. Mario Boyd has two. First one rims out. Mario Boyd, 67.8% from the free throw line. 
Averages about 15 and a half. Had 13 yesterday in the winner of the One of two from the line. 22-16. Marius Boyd swings it to Mario Boyd. That's a three, no good. Rebound New London. Once again, Stein. Whitefish Bay uh, went one-on-one, one, one one, and I think what Bay is trying to do is get the ball down to create that. They go half court, they're not going to be able to do that. Some transition basketball for New London, and Luke Engel, nice drive to the bucket. Still see New London in their 2-3 uh, zone or 3-2 zone. Good passing that time. G finds Reeves, Jerry Reeves now with four. And we'll get him on track. Both Reeves and Morio, I think. This yeah. line shot rimming out for Kaepernick. Now Reeves will bring it up. Now Whitefish Bay. Show some patience now. Yeah, but every time they've shown that patience, uh, New London's got back in the ball game. Instead of attacking the basket and moving the ball around. Seeing anything different now in the uh, half court sets, second half? No, uh, they did get the ball inside and they did let Marius penetrate what they don't want to do and then Reeves got an easy lay in. So I think they made those kind of adjustments at halftime. Reeves now has the last four points for Whitefish Bay. He's got six. Hints inside, tied up. G, and they'll get G on the foul. That was next an entry pass into Hints. Uh, uh, one problem is that he put it on the floor instead of taking it right up. And taking it right up, as you see on a replay right here. Great pass. Rhythm bounce got him in trouble. If you're taking it right up, he had an easy lay in. He gets two free throws anyway, though. Matt Hints at the line. He has 10 points already. At 24 yesterday. Roy Hintz has seen a lot of basketball in 21 years. Well, he's been in New London for 21 years, right? I don't know if he's any place else. Actually, he started at uh, Colfax High okay. School, where he worked for uh, Doug Chickery. Oh, okay. And then one of his assistants was Dick Diener, now with Fond du Lac. Roy Hintz left, went to New London, and uh, Dick Diener took that team and <laughs> coached Colfax to a state title. Thanks a lot. Thanks for building that program. <laughs> well, now what you see in the last transition down the court is New London changed their defense and went to man to man. And then right away, uh, Whitefish Bay uh, went into their, uh, their tandem there, where they're going to try to uh, isolate and go one on one with the big three. Reeves spins, baseline, tough shot, doesn't get it. Rebound, Mario Boyd, out of bounds, off Boyd, New London ball. But being down 26-19, you're probably gonna have to come out of that zone to probably uh, to force some more movement. Is this a key possession here for New London, Jim? I think so, yes. They need a, bas they need a basket. Don has been quiet so far in New London. His hints for three, no good. Rebound knocked around. Don gets a hand on it, taken away. Jeff Frank. And Bay's trying to push the ball again. Marius Boyd with it. Gets to Frank. Cross court, Mario Boyd. Whitefish Bay now will spread that offense. Okay, New London went back into their zone after that last time down in the man to man. Out of the corner, three pointer, Jerry Reeves. Reeves stepping up in the second half, has nine, only had two, first half. In the lane, Don banks it home. That was a good bucket, because uh, they were on a dry run. Good answer that time for Don. Mario Boyd pulls up, short. Marius Boyd gets it back, goes up strong and scores. Now this is what you don't want, and now, now they've had a couple second looks the last couple times down. Kaepernick spinning, fouled on the way up. Mario Boyd. 
Going to get some substitutions. 52, Justin Engelmeyer back in for Whitefish Bay. And Clint Petit sitting at the scorer's table, number 32. He'll come in for Kaepernick after these free throws. Kaepernick has the first one. He has five. And he'll understand within striking distance from the free throw line. But what he can't allow is that one-on-one -on -one from either one of the three big three. Kaepernick gets them both. Petit will come in. We're going to take a timeout to hear from our network sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. <laughs> Back at the Kohl Center Division II State Championship, Whitefish Bay led it 19-16 at the half. It's now 31-23 for the Blue Dukes. Big reason why field goal shooting Whitefish Bay above 50% for the quarter. Yeah, they've been pushing the ball uh, uh, other than the first two quarters where they were trying to play a half court set for New London. And Matt Hintz for New London 0 for 3 this quarter. They're going to need him to get on track. The yep. Bulldogs want to win a state title. But, you know, being a shooter the way he is and a scorer like he is, you know, they, they can't shut him down uh, forever. Scott Emmerich's been listening in to the New London Huddle. Scott, take it away. One key point for Roy Hintz and his New London Bulldogs. He wants to see his team attack the post, attack the inside. Maybe that'll cre create some opportunities for his team outside. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Scott. Also trying to uh, perhaps draw some fouls if you take it inside, maybe get a couple of these Whitefish Bay players out of the game for a while. Right, you can't. They're, they've been settling for outside shots, and they got a good enough sides to go inside to create some fouls and get some uh, free throw looks if they have to. Now Boyd loses it. Steal, angle, hints, driving, and scoring. Hints with 13. That was a nice basket, but Whitefish Bay almost got back and uh, almost got that not to go. Started with a steal in New London. Pushed it up court. Under two minutes to go here, third quarter. They got New London that's still in that 3 2 uh, matchup zone or 2 1, 2 1, 2, depending on what the offensive set Whitefish Bay is showing. Mario Boyd, baseline, no good, rebound, Dawn. Hintz thought about the three. Tides instead to slow it down. Now, New London's done an excellent job of stopping that dribble drive penetration where uh, Mario shot that off balance shot. Don, cross court, Hintz open for three. Got it. That was a nice cross, uh, a nice skip pass. And did you see the down pick uh, to set Hintz free? It was wide open for a good look. Had a clear look, he stuck it. Hints. Getting it done, has 16 points for New London. Let's take a look at it again, and it starts with that pick. Nice skip pass, and then there was a down pick there for uh, Hints to all day long for that three-point basket. 7-0 run now for New London, and the Bulldogs have cut it to a three-point game, 31-28. Well, when New London's come down on their offensive end and move the ball around, uh, they've got some excellent looks at the basket. New London fans making some noise. It's back to a three-point ball game. That's what it was at the half. New London's still in their 3-2 zone. Matchup. Now let's see what Whitefish Bay does coming out of the timeout. Well, Whitefish Bay made some adjustments by taking um, G out and put uh, Reeve in the middle. Big three-pointer for Jeff Frank. He has six on a couple of threes. The lead is six. That was a good shot. What he did is they put Reeves on the free throw line and put the perimeter shooters on the wings. Petit gets it taken away. Here's Marius Boyd. Up and in. All of a sudden, the lead back up to eight. 14 for Marius Boyd. Yeah, bad time to turn the ball over. This game has been back and forth from the beginning. Just when New London had some momentum, Whitefish Bay comes back. They've got the last five. 
Yeah, just when they were about to make that move, when he hit that three-point basket, uh, they came back. Whitefish came back and got a steal and got a turnover. More subs, 54 Ryan Clifton, 52 Justin Engelmeyer in for the Blue Dukes. I want to rest from the last 29.8 seconds to go into that pivotal fourth quarter. 44, Nick Rower in for New London. Rower, another junior for the Bulldogs. He gets it inside, Kaepernick. Back to Rower. He's gone. Rower for three, rims out, no good. Rebound for Ryan Clifton and a foul on New London. Matt Hintz picking up his second personal foul. And now Whitefish Bay up eight, 11.7 to go here, third quarter. A chance to build that lead up again. They're picking him up a little high because you probably know that Morris is gonna shoot the shot. Stolen, knocked around. And we have played three quarters, 36-28 year score. Whitefish Bay on top. We're gonna take a break to hear from your local sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. New London had cut it to a three-point game at 31-28, but Whitefish Bay answers with a three-pointer and then this steal. Yeah, that happened at the wrong time. It seems like uh, we mentioned before that uh, uh, every time New London gets within three, um, and that's as close as they can get, of course, Whitefish Bay can't get any further than maybe eight or 10-point lead either. And a nice job by Boyd. I think he was thinking dunk when he first picked up that ball, but he saw the defensive player, made the adjustment, got the bucket. That was a great decision, yes. All right, just underway, fourth quarter. Whitefish Bay on top by eight. New London with the ball, trying to answer. Kaepernick, baseline. Yeah, Whitefish Bay is playing a strong uh, uh, de uh, zone defense also. Don drives, shoots over G, no good, tapped around. And it goes out of bounds. As Kaepernick hits the deck, your Culver's game stacks after three quarters. New London just not shooting the ball well today. Well, you got to attribute that to uh, Whitefish Bay's defense, too. And they did take some tough shots uh, the early part of the ball game, but they kind of subbed down a little bit. New London hitting a lot of threes yesterday. But today it's Whitefish Bay, 5 of 10. Nice pass. Good finish, Jerry Reed. Well, what New London has done is gone back to a man to man, and they're breaking them down now where he got to the bucket and they got an easy lay in. 11 for Reeves, 9 in the second half. It's a 10 point game. Hints, pump fake. Short on the three. Mario Boyd and a frustration foul there by Matt Hints, his third. And a substitution. Starter Luke Engel will check in. Nick Rower going out. Well, New London's going out. They're picking them up man to man. And uh, uh, we'll see what happens because you have that big three that can kind of break them down one on one where you can get to the basket for some easy uh, points in the paint. Whitefish Bay won a title in 1996. Lost in the semis last year. Trying to win another gold ball here today. Reeves in the lane, tough shot. Rims out, rebound Lobenstein. Now Don. Kaepernick. Don, just, Don has not had any open looks for three. No, it's been very difficult. And a foul on the drive by Matt Hintz, and they'll get Jerry Reeves, that is his fourth. Got to respect the three when Hintz gets it, but he's smart enough to uh, get guys in the air and go to the basket. Yeah, after missing that trade on at the other end, he took it to the basket and got a foul on one of the Whitefish Bay players. Robinstein, hassled by G. Robinstein will pull it out. Leave it for Hintz. Angle thinks about the three. Kaepernick, baseline, no good. Rebound G. He's tied up. And they'll get the held ball, but Whitefish Bay arrow pointing their way. I was going to say it's been very difficult on both teams to get any easy looks inside inside the lane. 
The filky Jack Blyer. Well, you got With Mario the handling the basketball now. I'm sorry. That's a good point, though, because usually it's Marius. Now they've got Marius Boyd posting up down low. He's being checked by Don. Marius Boyd with a good height advantage. And a foul on Don. Now, when Lunda goes man to man, they make it very, very difficult athletically to handle uh, uh, Boyd, uh, Mario Boyd, uh, and Marius Boyd. London has to stay in that man because they're down 10. They're going to need to force some pressure. Exactly. A couple more fouls. Whitefish Bay will be in the bonus. Frank. Took some tough shots. Had that one partially blocked. Hints had it. Knocked away by Mario Boyd. Players hitting the deck. Marius Boyd runs over G. Taps it. Out of bounds. A lot of hustle on that sequence. That was great hustle on both teams in that sequence to keep the ball from going over and back. And then when he fell down to try to keep it alive. There's a state title on the line. These players are leaving it out here. Even, uh, even a little skin on the uh, Cole Center floor as yes. well. Long shot there. Engels got it. Uh, they were in desperate need of that shot right there. Thought about it for a while. Decided to pull the trigger. Engel has five. Lead back down to seven. Under five to go, fourth quarter. G, driving, travels. Yeah, I don't think G is the one they want to go one on one. They want to give it to either Reed, uh, Morris Boyd or Morio Boyd. Let's take a look at Luke Engel. You see he's got the open shot. Squares up and fires. He was wide open though. Nobody on uh, Whitefish Bay zone wanted to take him. Now pass inside, Hints operating low, scores! Now that was a great move and uh, Hints must have known how that Reeves has four fouls. Absolutely, Reeves could not do much there. Matt Hints has 18. We'll take a timeout to hear from our network sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. Back at the Cole Center, New London has battled back in this Division II state championship. On this bucket by Matt Hintz down low, and we talked about it. Jerry Reeves with four fouls really couldn't challenge him. No, much. he had to stay there and uh, put his hands up, but then Matt Hintz was, uh, was smart enough to just go straight up to try to draw a foul, and uh, Reeves was smart enough not to pick up his fifth foul. Teams even in the turnover department, 10 apiece, but New London has 12 points off those turnovers, five points off those last two. Now probably what you'll see is some isolation from uh, the Boyd twins, and they'll get, they'll get Reeves involved in it. Probably try to take some time off the clock and try to get to the bonus. Or, double, or try to get an easy layup inside. I don't think there's any urgency to probably score because they're up five points. Four minutes to go, fourth quarter. Whitefish Bay with the ball and a five-point lead. Marius Boyd in the lane, no good. Rebound, New London. Kaepernick, now Dawn. Hints. Finds Lobenstein. Now they'll swing it back around. Dawn. Get it inside to Hints. Put it on the ground, lost it. New London gets it back. That was good hustle. That's a reset. Here's Dawn. Thought about the three. They have Angle. He'll try short. Rebound, Jeff Frank. Now Whitefish Bay will set it up again. Try to do some of the same thing they did the last sequence down the court. In and out, or try to get in the lane and get a decent shot. Almost knocked away by Hintz, but he'll commit the foul. Four fouls now on Matt Hintz. Well, that's four on Reeves and four on Hintz. Six. And they're one away from the bonus, White, uh, Whitefish Bay. Matt Hintz will have to be careful. He will come out and pick up Mario Boy. I think he might try to isolate uh, uh, Mario Boy on him, maybe. And a traveling violation on Marius Boyd, 11th turnover for Whitefish Bay. 
Remember that whistle blew. Hintz was in there reaching in. And I thought, yeah, I thought that was going to be his fifth. Is, yes. A little shuffle of the feet. Now let's see if New London can convert off the turnover. Angle, another three. No good. Rebound, Mario Boy. A little too soon to be shooting the, from the outside. I mean, you got Reeves that's in foul trouble. Uh, you would want to think that the, the one the big men would try to get uh, some easy buckets inside. Now Marius Boy. Out to Reeves. Reeves will bring it out. Robinstein comes out to guard him. He wants clear out. Knocked away. Steal angle. Don back to angle. I'd say New London has 12 uh, points off the turnover zone, right? Yes, they do. Angle in traffic, in trouble. Up, no good. Rebound. Mario Boyd locks. Angle scores. Angles had a lot of shots. Knocks down a big one there. It's a three-point ball game. 38-35. Seven points for Luke Angle. And the intensity has uh, turned up for uh, New London. And I think uh, what White, Whitefish Bay can't do is play uh, tentatively. They have to keep doing what they've done for uh, three and a half quarters. Jeff Filkey, Jack Blyer want to talk it over. 1.35 to go here. Fourth quarter Division II State Championship. Whitefish Bay on top, 38-35. We'll take a timeout to hear from our network sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. Back at the pole center, 38-35, Whitefish Bay with the ball and the lead over New London. 1.35 to go in this Division II State Championship. New London, 3 of 10, Whitefish Bay 1 of 4. Scott Emmerich is sitting in on the huddle for Whitefish Bay. Scott, what do you have? All right, we'll try to, we'll try to pick it up with Scott Emmerich in a little bit. 1.30 to go here, fourth quarter. Mario Boyd. Well, during that timeout, they uh, took Matt Hintz off of uh, Boyd and put him on uh, G. Steal by Angle. He's had a couple big ones. New London can tie it with a three. Pull within one if they hit a two. Hintz, long three, no good. Rebound Reeves. That was a tough rebound. I don't think they needed a three right then. They should probably come down and try to get a two, but. Under a minute to go. Marius Boyd controlling things for New London. Whistle and a five second call. And we have a player limping. Casey Kaepernick got tangled up on that play. Turnover number 15 for Whitefish Bay. And now the Bulldogs will take a timeout to talk some strategy. Well, 47 seconds is a lot of time. All right, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll have today's Farm Credit Services game highlight. Here's your Farm Credit Services game highlights. And it's a steal by Marius Boyd. Now, I think he wanted to dunk this one, but Kid cut in front of him, he had presence of mind just to lay it up off the board. That was a good move. At that point, Whitefish Bay looked like it had the momentum and was starting to pull away, but that's been the story of this game, Jim. Whitefish Bay builds a lead, New London battles back. Battles back as, as close as close as three, once again. Now we'll see what they're gonna do with this possession right here. Casey Kaepernick, a little tender on the ankle, but he looks a little better right now. New London, three of 15 from three-point range. I think they would like one here. Yes. All right. Let's see what the Bulldogs do here. It's tapped out of bounds. New London will keep it. 40.3 to go. It's probably obvious on the huddle, I'm sure, that uh, the Whitefish Bay said now, keep an eye on 42 because that's who they're probably looking for. Got it to Hintz in the corner. Swing it back to Angle. Now Don. 25 to go. And they are shading. Uh, Whitefish Bay is shading toward uh, Matt Hintz. Inside. Swatted by Reeves. Big block. 
on Lobenstein. Huge block. Clock ticking down now. New London needs a foul. They get one in the backcourt. As Don commits the personal. That was a good foul. I don't think Evry's been on the free throw line uh, the second half at all. We'll take a look at that block. Now, Lobenstein had it on the blocks. He had the opening there for a second, but look at Reeves, good reaction. Yeah, he got up with four fouls. That was great reaction. He could have picked up his fifth foul. But they did foul the right person, though, because he's probably one of the worst free throw shooters. Jeff Frank, 78.9 from the line. Reeves. Actually, it'll be Reeves, check that, going to the free throw line. Is Whitefish Bay trying to sneak their better free throw shooter? Uh, yeah, they were trying to, yeah. We try to do that sometimes. There was contact, uh, but Reeves was fouled first. And then there was some contact at midcourt. And, that and was, Frank did walk to the free throw and line. That was, was a, ready to shoot. That was a smart move. You want your best free throw shooter up there. 7.7 7 seconds to go. Whitefish Bay will go to the free throw line with a three-point advantage. One and one. State tournament excitement. Jim, we've seen some great games in this tournament. We've seen some excellent games, and this one's not over with 7.7 7 seconds to go because Reeves is getting a one, one and one. He's one of the worst free throw shooters. And uh, you know what happened yesterday? I mean, uh, New London's been, his, it been in this position. They were in that position uh, yesterday where they came down and hit a uh, three-point basket to send them into overtime to win the ball game yesterday. All right, Scott Emmerich's been in the New London huddle. Scott, what are the Bulldogs talking about? Bulldog head coach Troy Inns told his team, said, hey, we're in the same situation we were yesterday. A guy at the free throw line, if they miss, get the rebound, take it down court, and fire up a three-pointer. All they need, though, is the guy to miss the free throw. Bob, back to you. All right, thank you, Scott. Well, it looked grim for New London yesterday. Yeah. But in the same situation, they got it done to send it to overtime where they won it. That's what uh, Reeves has to do is he's got to miss the front end of that, uh, front end of the bonus. And then they got to block out. So don't take for granted that it's a free rebound either. New London's got to box out and they got to get the ball. Jerry Reeves, 11 points, a big block on that last defensive sequence for Whitefish Bay. One and one. Gets the roll. There you got it. It's now a four point lead. Whitefish Bay now will pull all their players off the free throw line. Got them both. A five point lead. Two rollers. Now, John Gilo, 6 1 senior, comes in for New London. Luke Engel will come out. Must be a three point specialist. Still time. See what New London's able to do here. Inbounds pass to Hintz. He's picked up right away. A good defensive play by Marius Boyd. A few ticks off the clock down to 5.9. You could almost let him score and not take the ball out of bounds, but I don't know how many timeouts uh, New London has. Hintz fouled in the backcourt. A couple more ticks off the clock down to 3.8. Whitefish Bay can't foul the... Uh, New London Bulldogs not in the bonus. Oh, Two more excellent. fouls to give, so things looking pretty good for the Blue Dukes. Long shot there, no good. Whitefish Bay, your Division II state champions. Now, this looked like they won the state title. It wasn't like the last one, was it? <laughs> <laughs> now, this here is a celebration. A team that lost in the state semifinals last year comes back to win its Second title in three years. We're going to take a break to hear from your local sponsors. This is your WIAA network station. Whitefish Bay is your Division II state champion. Now time for our post-game award ceremony. So let's send it back over to Mike Mank, EPA announcer. Have your attention, please. The WIAA Board of Control invites you to participate in the award ceremony of these two outstanding teams that have just completed their tournament competition. 
Making the presentation to the Division II teams will be Pete DeRubis, President-Elect, Board of Control, and Principal, Greendale High School, and Donna Thomas, Director of Instruction, Waterloo, assisted by Karen Kuhn, Associate Director of the WIAA and Tournament Director. Will the members of the New London team please proceed to center court as your name is called to receive your individual team medal. Todd Copleen. D'Angelo Jackson. Joe Crane. Luke Engel. Travis Beyer. Justin Schleter. Jamie Dawn. Clint Petit. Glenn Procknow. John Gilo. Matt Hintz. Nick Grower. Casey Kaepernick. Kip Lobenstein. And Chad Empey. Will coach Ray Hintz of New London please proceed to center court to receive the team trophy. Will the members of the Whitefish Bay team please proceed to center court as your name is called to receive your individual team medal. Matthew Cook. Adam Presti. Tom Racina. Jeff Frank. Anthony Ward. Andrew Eversfield. Brian Gannon. Marius Boyd. B.G. Graper. Mario Boyd. Brendan G. Jerry Reeves. Justin Engelmeyer. And Ryan Clifton. And now, will coaches Jeff Vilke and Jack Blyer of Whitefish Bay please proceed to center court to receive the team trophy. Congratulations to both of these fine teams. 1998 state champs, Whitefish Bay Blue Dukes. They won it in 96. They win it again today, and our crack statistician, Don Kerr, has pointed out that two records set in this game, Jim. Lowest winning score by the title game, 
40 in this ball game by Whitefish Bay. Previous record 45 by Shilton in uh, 1986 and Kimberly in 1995. And the lowest total score, 75 in this ball game. The previous record, 78 for Kimberly and uh, Greendale in 1995. But of course, you don't need a lot of points to have a good ball game, and that's just what we had today. Oh, well, you had defense, and I think this tournament has been about a lot of defense. I don't think you've seen a lot of points have been scoring, so maybe because of the Dick Bennett syndrome, you know, where everybody's right. beginning to play good basic and fundamental, and with Vincent doing the same thing and having success, uh, both teams played outstanding defense. Just to give up 40, just to give up 35 points. Good basketball and a good ebb and flow to this ball game. The sequence is uh, Whitefish Bay would take a lead, start building on it, New London would battle back, but New London could never quite get over that hump. No, they'd get it down to three, and their Cinderella story probably just ran right. out. You can see that on that last second shot uh, where Whitefish Bay, and you know, Don mentioned before too about the chess game that was going on, you know, uh, and it was. It was, uh, it was a, a, a great game uh, between the two coaches, uh, Coach Hintz and Blyer and, uh, and uh, Jeff Thilke. And uh, our own Scott Emmerich has those latter gentlemen standing by the winning head coaches. Scott, take it away. Bob, I'm here with the two-headed monster they call the co-head coaches of the Whitefish Bay Blue Dokes, the state champions, Jeff Thilke and Jack Blyer. And first of all, Jeff, you first, uh, a familiar scene for you, second time in uh, five trips for Whitefish Bay. Well, uh, actually the third time uh, in a row at the state tournament, uh, second state championship. And this one is more meaningful probably than any of the others. And the reason being, and we've talked about this before, uh, our team was kind of the, uh, the shoe-in, so to speak, to make the state tournament. So we had to weather the storm all year long. And it wasn't necessarily perfect or pretty today, but gall darn it, our guys are warriors and they really did the job. Jack, what does it say about the character of this team and how they handled the pressure throughout the season? Uh, they really, we've talked all year long, it, it's really been a wonderful group of kids. They've asked, we've done, they've done everything we've asked them to do. Uh, yeah, you're right, the character's the right word. They have a lot of character. You guys are starting something new here. Pretty soon we're going to have all, every high school with two head coaches. What do you think, what about, talk about the relationship a little bit. Well, it has to be in the right uh, scene at the right time. Everybody's got to be on the same page. You know, people are going to bring different philosophies, different theories, both offensively, defensively, how to handle kids. But we've been together a long time now, and I think that, that, that you've got to have that perfect fit. And it's been that way. And so if you have the same thoughts in mind, it just blends with the kids in the same manner. Jack, is that true? There's a sixth sense between you two? Oh, I, I did. I, like I said, I would go and talk to Jeff about something we need to work on just like this. And I, you know, it's just exactly what I was going to talk about. Couldn't be more on the same page. And uh, I have a little intensity, and Jeff somehow was able to keep me calm down and very patient with me. It, it, We've had some wonderful moments together. I wouldn't trade it for anything. No, I saw some of that intensity in the fourth quarter there in New London. You guys had a 10-point lead. The Bulldogs came back and cut it to within three, I believe. And in the huddle, you weren't talking about defense. You were talking about offense and motion, cut and, and slash to the basket. So what were the reasoning behind that? Jeff? Well, I think uh, they were in a matchup zone all night long. And, and if, wherever our men, if we were standing, they were standing right next to us. Motion means that we want to get them moving with their heads turning, with their backs to the ball. That creates some openness for our game. Jerry Reeves was able to do a little bit uh, better job uh, inside. We hit some big shots. Jeff Frank hit a big one on the three-point side. And that's all created because guys are moving without the ball. Jeff Thilke and Jack Blyer, the head coaches of the Whitefish Bay Blue Dukes, your Division II state champions. Now back over to Bob and Jim. Gentlemen. All right, thank you, Scott. Great feeling for those head coaches. Let's now take a look at our second half highlights. And again, a continuation of that same theme. Two teams going back and forth. This one, New London getting a steal on this possession here. And the Bulldogs are off and running. Yeah, and, uh, even though that was a great defensive play, uh, they almost didn't get the lay -in. Uh, That was the way it was uh, tonight, I think, uh, uh, with New London. Shooting percentage not as high as the Bulldogs would like it to be. This was a very big bucket right here by Jeff Frank, the junior guard. We thought it was a big bucket, but uh, yeah. And uh, as it turned out, uh, uh, it was probably nil in the coffin. And then everybody else kind of picked up behind that, I think. On this steal by uh, Morius Boyd, uh, he was going to dunk it. Then the kid cut in front of him, and then he just laid it in. It looked at that point that Whitefish Bay was going to pull away and... Uh, Go on for the victory, but they had to work for it. New London getting it down low to Matt Hintz. Yeah, and, and you know, this is a state championship game. I mean, the adrenaline is flowing, and that's exactly what happened. New London didn't give up. They kept battling back. 
New London down three late. Lobenstein gets it rejected. Great play by Jerry Reed. I think that was a huge play right there. Cinderella season ticking away for New London, but the Bulldogs figure to be tough next year. Ten juniors on the roster, two sophomores, and uh, when you look at the key juniors coming back, that entire front line along with Jamie Don in the backcourt. Final stats, New London just not the field goal percentage that they needed. They needed to shoot a little better if they were going to win this one, Jim. No, but I think I, I think that, uh, you know, if you look at the score and Don came up with uh, those stats, I mean, uh, winning the state championship is great. I don't care how you win it, but, you know, when you only give up uh, 40 points or 35 points, that that's amazing. So it was defense. Hints leading the way for New London with 18. Marius Boyd closes out an outstanding high school career with 14. That's going to do it down here. Jim, I enjoyed it. We saw a good ball game and two more on the schedule tonight. Divisions three and one championships. Let's now toss it upstairs to Ted Stefaniak. Great job, guys. And once again, let's quickly review what's happened so far today. We've given away two gold balls for state championships. The first game of the day featured Randolph and Three Lakes. Randolph jumped out, had a 20-point lead on Three Lakes, and then went on for a 50-46 to victory. Then Whitefish Bay, you just saw this game as Whitefish Bay defeated New London for the Division II state championship, 40-35. to Two very good games this afternoon. I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you tonight's games could be even better. Coming up tonight at 6.30, we've got Cuba City and Phillips playing for the Division Three state championship. And then about 8.15, following our first game, it'll be Milwaukee Vincent and Middleton going for the Division One state championship. Milwaukee Vincent will be going for their third straight state championship. It's only been done twice in the history of Wisconsin basketball. We're going to take a dinner break, come back at 6.30. Please join us then. We've got some more bas basketball action for you at uh, 6.30. So please join us. Thanks for joining us. So long, everyone. The 83rd Annual WIAA Boys State Basketball Championships are a sports exclusive of Shockley Communications Corporation and the WIAA TV Network and have been brought to you by Cenex, Land O'Lakes, and your local cooperatives, partners you can trust, the Dairy Farm Families of Wisconsin, and Milk. Remember, milk is the foundation of family meals and the foundation for 300 varieties, types, and styles of Wisconsin cheese. Got milk? Marshfield Clinic, a national leader in medical care, research, and education. Rural Insurance Companies, providing a full line of insurance products for Wisconsin's families and businesses. The Wisconsin Technical College System, 16 colleges that make life better for the people and businesses of Wisconsin. For high skills training, go here, get there. And by Menards, helping families build America's heartland for 38 years. Save big money at Menards. <laughs>